Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new podcast. Music to live for with Shanti, it's me, Shanti, a Swiss musicologist and stage manager, talking with different artists and discuss different topics belonging to the music business. Who art as a person, who shows art as a profession, and what we can learn from their professional and personal experiences. The Swiss percussionist Fabian Ziegler is here with me to talk about his brand new album, the recording process and the potential of percussions. So let's go! Check this out. Hello everybody and welcome to this brand new episode. Today, an episode dear to me because I don't know if many of you know, so I'm also a percussionist, I'm a drummer. And so today I have the chance to talk with Fabian Ziegler and uh, I met him during the festival Um, the music festival in Davos, and I, I've been really amazed of the program he brought at this festival. And uh, I saw after a couple of months, he told me that he was producing his own brand new album. And so I decided that he has to be one of my guests on this podcast. So Fabian, how are you doing? Hi, Shanti. I'm very good. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. Hey, it's a pleasure for me too, because as I said, we met in summer 2020, definitely a special summer with a special vibe, but the festival in Davos was definitely a good experience for all of us, I think. Yeah, I mean, it was one of the few festivals um, which were actually happening in summer. So I was extremely happy that we, we could play there in the Davos Festival with our trio, the Trio Colores. And yeah, for me, the Davos Festival is, is every time a very special one because I was there now four times. So I'm kind of a regular guest. Um, now, now this year was the, was the last year in 220. And yeah, I was happy to be there again. And it was very nice to meet you. Yeah, definitely an, a special experience because um, w while reading day per day uh, the program, I always see okay tonight there is percussion or in the in the main hall or we were also in the in the middle of the nature, and it always been definitely an incredible and special approach to the instruments and the music and everything. But before we start talking about your album production and also something a little bit of it about Trio Colores. I would like you to introduce yourself for the audience. Yeah, I'm Fabian Ziegler. I'm a percussionist and I'm from Switzerland. Um, I was studying in, in Zurich. So I studied there now for seven years. Um, and yeah, now I will finish my studies in summer and I just um, released my first album, which is extremely important for me as a soloist. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm trying always to bring the best, the best I can to the people with recordings or in normal times with concerts. <clears throat> And I really, really, really like, you know, to play not only as a soloist, but also in, in chamber music formations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So before we go into deep, uh, into this album project, what could you say? I mean, I got it in front of me and uh, I really loved the, the way you choose your, 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 your graphic. And um, what about just, let's talk about the title, God's Rhythms Human. Yeah, you know, a lot of the program um, has a really close relation to the Greek uh, mythology. So like the, the first piece, Atalanta, by John Psattas, um, was composed for this CD. And uh, Atalanta is a figure in the Greek mythology. And yeah, she always, she was the fastest runner in, the, in, her, in her country. So her father always wanted her to marry someone. And she said, she's not going to marry anyone except 
uh, he would be faster than him. So there were a lot of guys, there were a lot of guys failing, um, but in the end, there was one very smart one and he just tricked her with, with some apples, uh, which he put down from the tree. So like this, he, he married her in the end. And, and this piece was, was, as I said, composed for this CD, um, for me and, and my future wife, um, which is going to be in one month, uh, Aquila Schillekaite on the piano. So this, this had a quite close relation to us and and the title gods was really coming from this that atalanta is having a, a relation with the greek mythology and and Tafa also like by xenakis he's or he was himself a greek uh, composer living in france and and also in Tafa there, there are a lot of poems um from the Greek mythology on which this piece is based. So this was kind of the, the idea about the gods, the rhythms, of course. I'm a percussionist. There are a lot of things happening with rhythms in all the different pieces on this city. Um, it's, a very, it's a very versatile program, I think. And yeah, you can hear so many different rhythms um, in, in every piece, so many styles of music. And the human is just somehow, it, it was very important for me to get this kind of um, subject also here, because I think the actual um, situation, like those this crisis, yeah, is everything going, going Virtually, it's everything online. You're kind of losing the the personal personal relation to to something like to listen to music. You're a lot on it's, you're a lot on Spotify. You cannot go to a concert any, anymore. Uh, you cannot meet the artist after the concert. So, I think I also wanted to still show the people that this is the main and most important thing about about um, music that the person itself which is playing it of course there are there there is a lot of music with <laughs> with uh, machines but the thing what is so beautiful about the music we're making is is really the person itself because this no machine can do mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this program was something that you decided to create but it's not, it's not related to what you were doing uh, during your period of studies in Zurich? I mean, you just decided, I want to, to bring out a product that it comes from one on, on your own, on, from your mind. Yeah, I mean, there, there are different uh, aspects in this. I mean, there are pieces like One Study, One Summary by John Zattas or, or also Interzones by Bruce Hamilton, which are like the the masterpieces of our repertoire, or also Psafa by Xenakis, as as most of Xenakis' repertoire for percussion is just it's just huge. It's just uh, one of the best things for percussion. So I kind of wanted to to mix a little bit, you know, those masterpieces, but also to commission a new piece by John Psatas, mm -hmm. um, and and also I mean Steve Reich is. Uh, is, is just a master of minimalism, such a big composer, such great music. I think this quartet from him is, is one of the best pieces he ever wrote. So, yeah, I wanted to mix the program a little bit with pieces where, which are kind of, yeah, in the, in the, in our repertoire, the masterpieces, the, the main pieces in our repertoire list. And to, to also mix it with pieces which maybe are not so much played or which are new, like Atalanta. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And which kind of, of percussion we'll find in this, in this album? I mean, I, I saw you playing a lot of marimba, xeophones, and, and but are those present in this album? 
there is like uh, one study, one summary is for, for marimba and junk percussion and electronics. So junk percussion is like a lot of different things like pens, uh, bowls, all, all kind of metal instruments. Um, you can hear the vibraphone a lot on this, on this album. Um, and also the piano is, is this, yeah, of course, with the relation with my, with my fiance is she's a pianist so i have this relation um to the to the piano and i just think it's it's very very nice to play with piano because the it's kind of it's kind of the same as as percussion it's it's working the same because they also have they have, they have this mechanic they can do one movement and it's one note mm -hmm. so as we do as percussionists so so this is also why i think it, it's it's just fitting very, very nicely to each other. Did you record it in a in a specific studio in Zurich, in a, or, or did you did you organize on, on your own with some friends and find a location and say, oh, this is the right place where we can record this album? You know, even even though we now think that that the only thing we can do in those crises is the, to record, um, it was actually also very hard uh, in spring because my my recordings would have been planned for May um, in, in 2020. So of course we didn't know for quite a long time um, if we can do it, if they're going to open the, the recording space again uh, before, before those dates. So we just had to move it. Um, we were we were um, we should have recorded the album in, in Rheinau, in the Music Insel. And yeah, due to the cancellation of the dates, we had to find other dates. There were not very, there were only a few dates we could actually do the recording because, yeah, I mean, there were still like five people involved. Um, and so we had to, we had to move also to another space. So we had to find another space. It was, was quite, quite hard uh, because it was like really two months before the recording, mm -hmm. uh, maybe three months. Um, and then we finally found a very nice space um, close, to, close to the border of Switzerland in the NAC, it's the Klangscheune. And, and this, it was a very nice hall, a little bit smaller than the Musikinsel in Rheinau. But it was was very nice to to well, to be there for for those days. Yes, I definitely understand it because, uh, as we all knew, uh, last year we, we all have to give up to a lot of programs, to a lot of uh, uh, journeys. It could be not just like holidays, but also professional and in our lives. And so we need to find also uh, another way to to uh, invest our time and our, our passion for music. And um, it's always interesting, I think, to uh, one year later, uh, listen to how different musician, how different person choose to adapt or to, to try to find uh, a way to, to realize their own project or just to keep doing music because um, it's a, it's, it's a point that it brings out in almost all at the episode, because uh, I think it's, as I said, different guest, different person, different point of view. And uh, this COVID-19 situation just um, force yourself really to, you know, not just take one month off, but really a long period. And this is, can be definitely distracting, can be definitely disappointing for many people. It has a, it has, this has, a, it has been a situation also for me. Uh, I found the time for record, start recording my podcast. But um, I have to be honest, I, I had definitely all the kind of project uh, for last year. So as person... I and as a musician, I always been definitely so stressed while on studio and recording 
uh, I was the only experience I had. I did it as a drummer. And I was really stressed recording percussion, but also the idea of being on studio. And, and how, how do you live that? I mean, you are a, profess a professional musician. So let's say you, are, you spend most time playing your instruments, you know your instruments, you know what you're doing, you know all your movement. And um, I don't know, did you, did you get used to doing something like this, playing a recording or to still this kind of, yeah, let's be a little bit nervous about doing it right. Yeah, I mean, it's for sure, it's a super stressful situation. I mean, I, I, had, I had already some recordings, you know, like some video recordings or something like this. But, but this, my first CD recording was for sure way much different because it's just like you're not recording one video, not one piece. You're recording like 60 minutes of music in four days. And and it was super stressful. I mean, I really, I really enjoyed it also. But yeah, I mean, there are so many, so many different feelings you're having in in the recording process. I mean, in some in some moments you're like extremely happy because the things are working perfectly and of course there are there are always the different and the, the very hard situations where you're you're just getting getting pissed about yourself and uh no i mean but but i honestly need to say that i'm i'm really happy to to work with the sound engineer i'm working with mario bruderhofer because it's, it's not only that he he knows himself how percussion should sound. Uh, I also recorded already quite a lot of things with him, so he knows a little bit how how I want things to sound uh, on the recording. And also, yeah, I mean, the sound engineer is also in those kind of situations. He's also like a psychologist because he just needs to calm you down if you're you're pissed and and uh, just keep on moving uh, on the recording and and of course in the end the result just is the most important thing the result just needs to be needs to be as good as possible mm -hmm. so this is why i think it's it's hard it's a hard process but it's it's definitely worth it yeah yeah it's also a human process like the collaboration in between technician and musicians and uh, change of opinions, as you said. I mean, it's something um, interesting because because um, I think a, a couple of people just have this idea of you know you go you go recording you 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 see there's maybe just there's one light on the wall becoming red and okay we are on air you are recording and the things you have to give the best and then it's done but. Uh, um, I remember the process I did with this band I was recording with. It was like, okay, well, you take one, you take two, and then you just sit down and you listen to the, what you've done, and then you say, hey, you know, you you, got, you sound kind of stressed or kind of that part. And would you try something else? Would you try? I mean, it's not just go there and show off what you can do. It's definitely one chance, maybe a little bit different than preparing a concert. Uh, where where you, you you concentrate maybe on some specific thing on studio, uh, you, you can you have the chance really to see what is your style and what you are looking for. But I, I think one question will be interesting to me is what you said you prepare you decided how to plan this album. You choose uh, uh, which um, which um, which song pro uh, to insert in the list. And also you, you, you ask to this composer to, to write music for you. And, and then you go on the studio. And after these two different kind of process in the end, are you definitely satisfied of your choice you made? I mean, already from the beginning from, okay, I choose to play this and that. And now we are recording that way. And then you have this final product. Well, I mean, I think with the with the mix of the pieces the the list of the pieces on the cd i am i am really satisfied um 
But of course, are, if you are in the studio or I mean, after every concert or doesn't matter what you're doing, you're never satisfied. I mean, there are always the things you're like, ah, this could have been better or this could have been better. Um, yeah, but in the end, I think it's it's just in the end even more stressful in a in a recording because I mean in the concert you're going from the stage let's say you're not satisfied uh, it's just over you cannot change it mm -hmm. um, if you're in the studio and you're recording and you're listening then you're like okay no let's do it again let's do it again mm -hmm. uh, it, it can work it will be all good. Um, so you, so you kind of have the possibility to still change something. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and on the other hand is, it's just also that it's extremely interesting to listen to yourself. It's also why I'm trying to do this, uh, also when I'm, when I'm practicing, um, just, just to, just to listen to myself, to record, uh, what I'm doing, because it's just so much different what you are what you're thinking how you play or how it sounds um when you're playing yourself so i think this is also this is also something which changed uh in in this in this situation right now that we had to start to record ourselves like for like 3 4 months we didn't have like proper lessons with our teachers for example if you mm -hmm. if you're still studying so so you're starting to record yourself uh or i mean even if you have a lesson it's like it was it was online so you were, were like you were recording what you what you were practicing so i think this also maybe changed uh some things about how we work sometimes so I, I think this situation right now is not it's not only I, I cannot see only the bad things. I think there are also a lot of good things. Um what what I learned, uh like really to record myself more, to you know, to work more efficient, to take my time off because well, because you just you just have to, you're kind of working all the time. I, I can feel this right now. You're just working, working, working. You are almost not having a break because you, you somehow you cannot go to holidays or something. Mm -hmm. So, so this is why I realized I need to plan my days. I need to work efficient, and I will have also my time to relax uh, my brain, to relax my body, which I realized. Um, it's just extremely important because mm -hmm. I can, we can all, we can work as much as we want if we don't have um, the time where we can relax. It's just, yeah, at one point it's not going to be better anymore. Yeah. So, so I think this crisis showed us also some, <laughs> let's, let's say it's some stupid stuff, what we were doing all the time. Um, so I think, yeah, we just need to try to take also the positive things from it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, still having the hope that we can, we can be on a stage soon again. Yeah. And that was also my next question is that, is this album a project or it's a, a, a program that would you like also to bring in a, like in a, in a concert or in a, in a series of different concert to promote it or just to just to to play it live definitely i mean the thing is you know it's it's nothing about uh it's nothing about money or it's it's nothing about this even if this, the the situation is hard but i think what we are missing the most is just to go on the stage to to feel what the audience is is uh, thinking how are the reactions to what we do this this is what i'm missing so of course i would really love uh to to play this concert uh this program in in a concert live um i did actually play 
some of the pieces already a lot in, in concerts. Um, yeah, but like the Reich uh, Quartet, we, we did only for this CD because we just, yeah, we just couldn't organize or whatever. We couldn't do anything, no performances, no no concerts, nothing. So I, I just hope that, that this will this will be back soon because I just want to present this very nice music to the people in a in a concert hall, not only on the CD or wherever on Spotify, Apple Music, but but really just on the stage and to and to talk to the people about whatever whatever they are they are thinking during during my playing or what they're feeling. This is what is what is so interesting in our job. I mean, it's not it's not uh, not only being on stage. It's also it's also that we we can meet so many great artists. We can visit so many nice countries. We can see so many different cultures. This this is just what what makes it worth it to to work work for it and also in situations like this to to just fight for it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an an amazing thought, and I think that I I mean I think the same as you, and I uh, I totally agree when when people talk about this experience. I mean when more ex more precisely artists, musicians talk about their live experience, the fact that, yeah, you have the chance to travel, uh, of course, see the world, but also get in touch with other person that are sharing your passion. And you can just have this charge of, of new inspiration. And this is something that we are, we are definitely missing because, yeah, we can, we can do like we are doing right now with the podcasting, like having a Zoom call, but it's not the same, you know, it's always good to see somebody you like, somebody you think, okay, we definitely need to, to talk about this and that, but you, you, you can feel that it's not the same, but yeah, now it's like this. Um, let's take a step back. Um, I would like to ask you, how did you get into percussions? I mean, I mean, there is a, out there, there's a lot of kind of, different instruments and how did you land on 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 playing and then study percussions well um i mean i was i was playing a lot uh, a lot of wind bands uh, earlier so so there i just uh, i just saw so many instruments of course i I, I didn't really see like uh, the string instruments or you know like the harp or something, but I mean I saw still all the all the winds. I saw the percussion. Uh, I saw the conductor. So I thought, okay, this is this is my thing, uh, because my father is also a conductor, mm -hmm. not professionally, but but as a hobby. So I just went with him already when I was like super small. And uh, yeah, and there I just saw all those instruments, and I was like, "This is it." So I started with with percussion, uh, with uh, with drum set. Firstly, I think as actually most of the people uh, I know started with drum set, and and then I just I think in my second year of my studies, well, of my uh, learning percussion. Um, I my teacher sent me to a competition like with a setup piece or or snare drum piece or something like this. So so and there I saw saw the marimba, and I was like, whoa, mm -hmm. this is this is great. This is just awesome. Like I was so excited about this instrument. So I just I went home. I, I said, and I said to my parents and also to my teacher. Uh, the next time in my lesson, I said I want to learn this uh, this instrument. So from there, I learned like you know like xylophone to know where which where which note is, and then slowly started with with the marimba. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and I mean then through through my studies, of course, then you are finally seeing all all the instruments. I mean, still not all the instruments, but 
but just so many different instruments and this diversity is just so so great about our instruments like you you can practice in a day of course you are also you need to practice every instrument um but but you can practice marimba you can practice vibraphone you can practice snare drum you can just whatever there are so many possibilities and yeah and i mean how i went uh, to this way that i said okay i want to study music was actually more that in some wind bands i met also musicians which which were studying already so they were a little bit older than me and i was also just talking a lot to them so yeah this that, that was the way and i think the end was like one conductor which really helped me a lot uh, in my in my young age. Um, he just really inspired me to to go for it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I knew with fourteen or fifteen that I want to study music. Um, my father did the right thing, honestly, because he said, "Okay, you're gonna do you know like an apprenticeship or something before you're gonna study music." And I mean, in in those kind of situations, I'm thinking, okay, maybe that was not so stupid. And uh, and I also I also just just think it's it's something which which is helping me every day because I learned uh, I was working in the office, so I learned um, <laughs> I mean I learned to be organized. I learned to write letters, how to write emails, how to do whatever, you know, like a budget. So so this is also what helped me a lot that I can organize my own projects now. Mm-hmm. Because of course it's it's great when you're finally performing, but but like from performing to go some steps back it's a very long way because because you just i mean everything is about money <laughs> so you need to find money uh mm-hmm. that you can just do the projects you want um like this this commission i did for this cd atalanta i think i commissioned it in 2018 so it was 2 years before i actually did the cd mm-hmm. So there was a long way from there, from commissioning it, like to sign the contract with the composer until it was recorded now. Mm -hmm. So I think also this is why I just really love those kind of things because, of course, it's a lot of computer work always to do all those projects. I just just love to, to work with composers, to commission new pieces. Uh, this this is like my main goal right now because I just also think that percussion is starting little by little to have a very nice repertoire, mm-hmm. but I think there are still a lot of gaps we can fill, and this is why I'm I'm really working with 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 great composers um, on different new pieces for solo percussion for chamber music uh, like percussion concertos. This is like my main goal and and uh yeah it's funny my my way here helped me so much even the things what I maybe was thinking like you know but I want to study now I want to practice I want mm-hmm. to play I don't want to work in the office but uh, there were so many things which which are just helping me now and and what just making myself who I am mm-hmm. Well, this is the, one of the most important lessons. And it's funny because I wanted to ask you, uh, did you have some advices for some new new and young musician or stuff like this? But you just said uh, like everything, like uh, appreciate what you're doing. Uh, try to learn the most you can, the most as you can from all the experience how you're living in life because maybe sooner or later it's going to come handle. And of course, you said there is always a lot of work behind a project. In this case, your 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 brand new album, and and this could be also for um, for organize a concert or just a, or or a, or or like uh, have the chance also to 
to to to ask a commission to a composer. I mean, it's not the things coming out <laughs> like this from nothing. It's always hard work, and um, it is interesting because uh, I guess a lot of musicians are trying to do this um, on their own, and this is good. But I also think it's healthy uh, also learn. Uh, you know, sharing these ideas and maybe looking for somebody helping, like can, some kind of manager. Uh, that's This is also words that sometimes is kind of tricky, I think. But uh, yeah, I think that uh, if you if you have the chance to, to, to use all the knowledge you, you, you have learned in the last uh, year of your of your study periods, or as you did, like uh, you, you, you worked for a period and then and at the moment you were saying, oh, uh, uh, why I'm doing this or you know you you know you know they have to do something but you don't know how to connect but then years later you say no no I can I can I have no problem knowing um how to set a budget how to manage this and that and how to also write a good email or a letter to present my project and present my friends uh, my colleagues musicians that are working with me and those are all little skills that you can have on your own from what you have done and what you have learned and or you can also uh yeah just just open and discuss with friends uh i, I want just to say this because i noticed that sometimes um there is this kind of fear or kind of like not trust much your colleagues because that you fear maybe they're gonna steal something from ideas or stuff like this but uh, in the end i think Sometimes sharing your idea or asking, asking for help or for an opinion, maybe uh, it's it's always a good solution because because yeah, you may you don't know, but maybe one of your colleagues, somebody which who maybe played for so many years together, knows how to solve the problems that you have. And this is something that it just and then back on your your way into percussion is all fascinating because I remember my, myself, my music teacher, um, he was working a lot with uh, the clown Dimitri. It was That's kind cool. of from Ticino at the time it was well known all over the world and was, he did project all over the world. And um, so it was more like at the beginning, like playing with the instruments, I mean playing, but like like a toy, you know, just touch it, understanding how they're doing. And um, and then I remember that I, I always been more for the dr uh, drum set guy. I mean, <laughs> I have to be honest. And maybe I had to study a little bit more paradiddles. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> last year I, I started again because now I have time and I did it. But uh, but for example, one uh, one of a good friend of mine at the time it was uh, it was definitely more into also xylophone and marimba, and for a couple of years he did definitely a, a nice um, a nice career in that uh, with that instrument. But then uh, working, for example, for a jazz festival in Ascona, uh, as there I had the chance to meet those people from New Orleans, uh, real jazz man. And it was interesting because uh, we were talking about, about um, the approach with the uh, instrument and the music. And one, one of these guys was saying, you know, um, since I'm a child, I always been um, with my father on Friday evening and my uncle and we were playing with other friends living in the neighborhood and that's the way I got into the music, but also the way I've learned how to play the instrument. And there are person that years and years after years, I got like um, that feeling for the instrument, for the, that kind of rhythmic. And but they never been to the music school, let's say, like because they didn't you know, have like the European way of learning instrument. Yeah. And and on the other side, you also you I was watching a documentary uh, about um, young percussionist starting in high school. As a in a marching band, and now it's kind of interesting because there are all, there is also like this, uh, it's like a subculture of uh, drummers playing with the sticks and doing kind of really crazy rhythm, and really also really fast and, and everything. And, and this is also an interesting approaching because 
uh, while on tour with a metal band, uh, I was seeing this guy doing a lot of fast beats. I mean, belonging to the genre. And I told me, and I was asking me, hey, where did you get that technique? I mean, it was incredible. I said, yeah, you know, I, 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 I played a lot in the, in, the, in the high school marching band and things. So he got like the technique on the snare. And then he put this on the passion doing other kind of music and also having the goal of, of uh, touring all over the world and see something new. So all this kind of experience, knowing that also to me, percussions is something that's still uh, important. And also something that also I have the chance to observe uh, you with Trio Colores, the fact that also you were doing this um, John Cage pieces only with words. And this is something that I, that broke me back to something that my teacher uh, once told me uh, about um, how percussion, how rhythmic, it's something that belongs like really to the body. It's something that you can see, you, you may know, you can play it on you, when you're, you're tired uh, on your legs or you're traveling and, and you see and you recognize of the rhythmic in the movements. I mean, also how, how your body also, it's part of doing rhythmic. And, and um, this is something fascinating. I think that you can also recognize this aspect with other instruments, of course, but percussion, have more this this uh, this influ this boundary in between your body and the instrument you're playing. I mean, this this is some kind of personal reflection. I don't know if you can recognize that, but um, it's definitely something that uh, still amazing. Also, if you see other kind of tradition traditional percussion, you know, not not just uh, then not specific going on on classical music. Um, or uh, as I said, European tradition like this. But uh, Fabian, we met, as I said, we met in Davos and there you were playing with the Trio Colores. Trio Colores is your project, right? No, no. Um, it's like we, we started we started together. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, we started um, as a quartet. Um, so uh, one one guy of our court that he just just quits to play percussion or is, at least to study percussion. So this is how yeah this is how we got the trio. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's not at all my project. Um, it's it's really our project. And uh, yeah, I mean it's it's just a, it's just so interesting for me to to work with with those two guys. They're just incredible. I'm I'm also I'm just learning so much from them. Um, um, you're yeah. I mean you're. I'm also learning so many so many personal things. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's it can be quite it can be quite hard. I mean, if you're we we have we have some some periods where we're just in normal time to where where we are just playing really a lot together so we are like around each other for like two months for almost every day mm -hmm. so so of course there are always also conflicts but but those kind of things also just they just make it make it better your your you're realizing different things. You're starting to also sometimes critically talk about stuff uh, and and about uh, and about different things. And and the, the talks and and the discussions are just bringing so so many different and and new aspects or new thoughts or whatever. So I'm really I'm really happy I can be part of such an ensemble. Um, and uh yeah i mean i guess i guess uh, as we were talking with you i uh, will not say too much because maybe we will be also featured in another episode of so course. uh <laughs> so no for me it's just really this this kind of diversity you know that i can play as a soloist that i can play with my with my fiance uh, as a duo that i can play the, in in the trio colors with with those two guys it's it's just like 
yeah, it's just great for me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And correct me if I'm wrong, but did you say that you put also some kind of electronic in this album? I mean, how, what's yeah, this, what exactly. Is, sorry, what what is your what what is your your approach to this this kind of modern way to do music, let's say, and and, and create sounds? Well, I just I just really like to play with electronics. You know, it's. I think I'm a quite precise player, so it's not too hard for me to to play with electronics. Um, I just really love it because you're having so many possibilities, so many more possibilities what you can do. Um, I was just uh, one week ago, I was having an interview with John Satas uh, in which we were actually discussing about working with electronics and And uh, yeah, it was it was quite interesting to to also hear the, the the thoughts of a composer why he is composing for electronic. You know, you can you you can you can tell stories, for example. You can just you can have so many different possibilities what you can bring into a solo piece. Um, like if you are having I don't know, a solo marimba piece, you normally, you're just having the marimba. So, so like this, you can kind of, you know, even with words, you can just tell a story, you can have uh, way much more effects, you can have way much more sounds, you can, you can build a piece also um, very different, I think, to, to a piece without electronics. And uh, yeah, I just really, I just really love it. This is why I'm doing it a lot. I'm, I'm commissioning it a lot actually, and also, it's it's a lot of it on on my album now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's always interesting to see how um, young musician decided to approach to this kind of. Uh, I would say it's this kind of music, but also this kind of elaboration, this kind of uh, of new distinct pattern of uh, pers- let's create a new perception of music. Um, this is something that comes in more for the contemporary classical music, where we have yeah. more um, dynamics uh, and, and, and new interpretation of the dimension of music and uh, of course if we integrate more this kind of electronic and you, it's, it's definitely open like a new door so bringing uh, bringing the the opportunity uh, or let's say the, the capacity of an instrument to to another level definitely and of course uh, proposing new new kind of sounds It's it's always be like a little bit, let's say, the the future of something because if not, people things are just staying and just yeah. keep the same for so many times. So it's definitely um, yeah, of course something something that I also think interesting is definitely the way everybody try to in, interpret it. Something is that how people try to. Um, to interpret, to try to innovate, maybe. Because I, I said interpret it because sometimes it seems like we have we come or maybe we grow up with a huge tradition um, of classical music. So uh, it's not just create something new, but also re-elaborate what we already know. And, uh, and at the same time, yes, creating something new and... Um, And your opinion as a percussion is that percussion allow this, right? I mean, this is something that percussion fits right in this combination. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the thing is really that that with electronics, I mean, there are different kind of of electronics uh, of pieces with electronics. Uh, I mean, you have sometimes electronics which are just super straight. 
uh, like a beat going through or whatever, or you have electronics which are just creating this kind of atmosphere. So I think I think just that the especially those electronics uh, which are like you know steady uh, going, just not stopping, and and more having like giving you a tempo, giving you a beat or something. It's just. It's just uh, percussion is just the the instrument which can which can just play this super precise and I think we're just also used to to play to something like this because because I I guess there are a lot of instruments which are which are maybe not used uh, like you know if they would need to play with a drum set or something mm-hmm. because it's more it's it's just different and and i just i just also think that still even if you even if you have electronics i still think you can do whatever you want you can you can create exactly the same the same things um musically mm-hmm. as if you would not play with electronics of course it's different but but I mean, for example, if you have a piece, I'm I'm preparing now a piece for for my next album, um, which which is having electronics. But you know, it's more it's it's more uh, an atmosphere. It's creating an atmosphere. It's just somehow opening the the you know the room. It, it's it's just way much more space. You can you can fit in, and it's not really it's not really a, a track which is like beat or whatever you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, so there are so many possibilities. There are so many different uh, so many different styles also you can do with with electronics. So this is what makes it just really interesting for me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I love this idea of not staying on a straight line in what is music, play music, create music, but also this idea of just breaking all boundaries, definitely. I have the chance to work with uh, Basel Sinfonietta and um, we did uh, um, a project in, uh, in a huge halle here in Basel And we had the orchestra in the middle. And fun fact is that uh, the percussion is used in, at the end. No, it was the, in the beginning of this piece, uh, a huge tam-tam that we brought from Paiste. And it was huge. <laughs> Definitely we need like four people just to, to set the whole thing. <laughs> and, uh, and then there was also like uh, five soloists uh, and they, they were playing different position in between um, the audience. And we, so we had the situation of a kind of a huge orchestra set in the middle, uh, but huge orchestra, but small in compare of the, of the place where we were. And, and um, so it was interesting because during the rehearsal, the things were definitely kind of crazy. Because you you didn't get it where we're going. F- what's the goal? You know, like it was kind of s- sounds, accents, dynamics, but you don't know hey, what what's going on here. But then um, the day uh, we we had the concert, this is playing this music in this huge space create like an effect of surround. It was amazing because, um, as I said, Rialso's place, small, uh, kind of a lot of confusion, I would say. But then there, you know, this, uh, this idea of creating something new, cre- open, definitely space, not just in your mind, but also physically. It was uh, an amazing experience. And uh, also in that case, percussion had a huge um, role. To, to expand this idea of, uh, of space and sound. But yeah, before we close this, this great episode together, 
uh, I would like to ask you plans for the future. I heard that you, you gave us an hint that you're already preparing uh, a new album. Um, and we can also keep it as a secret. I mean, we don't need to talk about that, but uh, uh, any, any dreams, let's say, it's, in this period, everything, it's possible, but also we know that, yeah, we need to also be prepared to, to not to give up, but to uh, put things aside for a while again. But did you have any plans, any dream music related? Well, it, it's definitely not a secret about my second album, so we can talk about it shortly. Um, now, I'm, I'm preparing a new program uh, by John Zatas, so it will be a portrait uh, CD, uh, just with his music. And on the CD will be um, three new pieces, um, like the one which is already on this, on this CD, Atalanta, which we commissioned. There will be a double concerto uh, for orchestra and uh, piano and percussion, but of course not with orchestra um, because we did a version for electronics and the two soloists. So this will be on the on the album. There will be a, a piece which is a little bit older, also for piano and percussion. Um, but it was never recorded, so it's really everything like the first recording of everything, and and uh, actually right now he is he is writing a new solo piece for me, uh, which will be also on this album. So yeah, this is the plan. Um, we're planning to record it in June, uh, since yeah, I mean those are the, some of the things we are quite sure we can do it, um, and then I mean. I'm having quite a lot of different projects now, which are coming next year. Um, I'm having a new, it's kind of a concerto for percussion uh, with choir, um, with the Zürcher Sing Academy, mm -hmm. and a new Polish composer, Arkadiusz Kontne. Um, we're working on this uh, actually right now. He just started to compose. We just decided more or less which instruments we will use. And um, then I'm having an upcoming commission with John Satas again, a new double concerto for two percussionists, which I will perform with uh, with my colleague from the Trio Colores with Luca Staffelbach mm -hmm. um, in, in New Zealand with the Orchestra Wellington and the Orchestra um, Christchurch. Whoa. And uh, and then I'm I'm working I'm working also right now on a new on a new piece with uh, with the German based composer Arash Safayan, which made a huge 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 uh, work uh, just recently, like last year. Uh, this is not Beethoven, and before he did uh, Überbach, which got like an echo when it was still existing. Uh, such an inspiring uh, composer, and I'm really happy uh, about about this. Those plans, we will we will uh, work on this with the Music Collegium Winter Tour, and then yeah, I'm I'm talking to different composers uh, with different orchestras, um, and I will just see where it leads. Um, I mean, this is really my main goal to to work with composers on new pieces, on new repertoire, um, that I can be part of the process uh, when they're writing the pieces. This is so, it's really interesting. Um, and I mean, dreams, I have one dream and it's that we are gonna be on stage as soon as possible and that we can share and enjoy music again together. Yes, I really hope the same too. Um, where you we can purchase your album is because you said there is on uh, on online platforms but also on physical version of it exactly so you can just purchase the the album through my website it's just fabenziegler.ch um if you are still like you know like me uh, which yeah i just like to to listen also on on my stereo here at home 
So if you still want to have a CD, then you can purchase it through my website. And yeah, and since uh, since last Friday, um, it is on all the platforms, um, wherever you are on Apple Music, on Deezer, on Spotify, uh, you will find it everywhere. Great, thank you. All those information were also available on the description of the episode. And Fabian, thank you very much for your time. Uh, to talk so openly about your project and uh, I wish you all the best for your career and for sure we're gonna uh, set an appointment for a episode with Trio Colores because I, I definitely love you guys I guess <laughs> I guess since the summer I talk about you with so many friends but hey I met this guy doing per percussionists from Zurich they were really really cool and I love the attitude I love the way they play but I love also the way I tell our persons and so I said definitely it's going to be an episode and thank you very much to be a guest on my podcast and hope to see you soon Thank you very much for the invitation and well, I hope we will see soon in person again and I'm looking forward to, to talk to you again with, with my two colleagues also. Thank you very much, Shanti. Great. Bye-bye. Bye. Check this out. You can find Fabian Music on all the online platforms and on his website you can purchase a physical copy of the CD. From his brand new album God, Rhythm, Human, composed by Jump Satas, 